Cubase Pro 9 offers many great editing enhancements using the zone system. The on-screen editing really simplifies the whole process. We could have different zones that are activated, and we see this by the white frame, and we can navigate between our currently active zones in our project from our inspector to our project window to our VST and media bay rack. Going to the upper right hand corner, you have a setup window. And what this is going to allow you to do is to actually have an additional zone on the bottom for doing editing. I could open it up directly from this icon or just the key commands, Command Option E on the Mac platform or Alt Control E on the Windows platform. And now I could see my MIDI key editor because this is what is selected. And by default, it'll follow this selection of events. So if I select an audio, I could come right there, or if I select a MIDI part. If you wanted particular editors to open in a full screen independent window or a floating window, we could go to the preferences. At this point, we could select editors, and here you could change the behavior for how the editors will open up and what your default MIDI editor is. So we close that. One of the things that we want to be cognizant of is that the zones can have independent zoom controls, depending on what is the active zone. So right now my project window is the active zone. When I hit G and H, I could just tab back and forth to between my different zones here. But let's say if I go back to my edit zone, if I hit G and H, only the editor is zoomed in and not the project window. So just be aware of that. Within the inspector itself, the inspector has kind of multiple functions. One as our inspector on a track level where you can set like the MIDI channel, but there's also inspectors within the editor. So if this is the active zone, I could actually just kind of click between my edit functions. So if I want to see node expression and quantization, or if I want to see my track inspector, and if this is the active zone, you could actually just hit command option and left, right, or alt, control, left, right on Windows, and you could just toggle that behavior there. So you could do everything, most of the functions directly here without leaving the main window. Now we also have different settings here, our tools and different icons that we're used to seeing in both our sample editors and MIDI editors. So as we look at this, we can customize these with the setup wheel that is on the right hand side. So you can pick and choose exactly what components are available and visible and the order that they want. So you can have these also go on the left or right hand side. So if I wanted to move this up, I could just say I want my snap, but I just want to move that and anchor it to the right hand side. Or I just wanted to move it up and change the position of the snap right there. As we wanted to make this zone bigger to see more information, one of the things that gets to be problematic is you could just simply move it up. But if you're doing something like notation, you may want to see the edit in the full screen view. And this is what this window, this icon does right here, uh, pointing up to the upper right hand side. If I click that icon, we could now just simply look at it in our full screen view. And conversely, if I wanted to tuck it back into the zone, I could just click on the arrow icon pointing to the left. So I could just come right there and then tuck that back into the zone. We have independent playing options here as well. So as I'm playing, if I wanted the views to be synchronized, we have this icon here that will link the zoom as well as playback position. So now if I zoom in, both parts will be zoomed. We could do this within the MIDI key editor. If I don't want that, I could just click here. And if I wanted my page scroll for my cursor where that will just update, and again, an independent zoom, I could do that. But let's say if I wanted to jump to my base part of my audio, I could click right here and I could actually choose to have this be a stationary cursor. So once it gets to the middle part, this will automatically, the waveform will scroll, and then I could just see my page scroll here. So I have independent scrolling, which is really handy for a lot of editing tasks. Now, once I look at MIDI data, I could actually look at it in several different ways. 
So let's say I'll zoom in here and you know, let's navigate just a little bit. Um, if I wanted to see not only my notes, but let's say if I have my data here where I want to see multiple controller lanes and sometimes working with, with the vertical space uh, limited to what we would normally view in a full screen view. If I wanted to open up my controller lane preset, let's say I have velocity, modulation, volume, and expression, you may get a message that it can't display all those different presets. Now the interesting thing is if I make it taller here, I could now open up that same preset and now I could see my all of my different controller lanes. Now as I do this, one of the things that's handy is as I kind of make this smaller, we can see those controller lanes kind of intelligently kind of tuck away. So really great use of space and different resources here within the controller lanes. If I wanted to see my data in a couple of other ways. I could also choose to look at my MIDI data. So I just choose my editor when I have a MIDI part. At this point, I could just say, let's look at it as a dedicated drum editor, or if I wanted to look at it as my score editor as well. So you can pick and choose exactly which editor that you do want to see the parts represented in. Now, one of the things that's also been updated is something that was a big feature request for a long time. We may notice that some of the note names would always show up as in represented in values of sharps. So sometimes when a note was labeled, you would see a D sharp instead of an E flat or an A sharp instead of a B flat, G sharp instead of A flat. So kind of the common and harmonic naming of like more commonly viewed note names. So if we go to the preferences and, and we have the chord track active, we can now just click here. So now we'll see, I have a couple of like D sharps, A sharps and G sharps. So now when I check this, we'll see that the chord, the note names will automatically reflect the flats. One of the things that we also want to do with any editors is also make some of the notation a little easier. So sometimes entering in notation parts. So let's say if I wanted to look at this, these parts here, and I just wanted to do some and view it in my notation view. So we'll look at it in score. And I want to come here and let's take this to a full screen. If I wanted to enter in notes, we have kind of an enhanced keyboard input. So I could just click here. And before we would have to hit the Alt key and then you know you could have various kind of key command combinations from your computer keyboard to enter in notes. But now what I wanted to do is I could select the rhythmic value here. So let's say I just wanna put in some quarter notes. And as I select my quarter notes here, I'll just click and let's say if I want that to be an octave down, I hit page up and page down. And now I could just hit C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F. And then I could just enter in uh, my notes and just by hitting the pitch of the particular notes. That way I don't have to always hit enter or option before. And you could change it in harmonic spelling if you wanted to. So one of the things we wanted to do in creating lead sheets and making those easier was a new concept called rhythmic notation. So if I wanted to come here, I could just select a phrase of notes here. So let's say I want to take this uh, pattern, it's going to be used repeatedly. And now what I could do is right click, go to rhythmic notation, and I could say, let's show rhythmic notation for those parts. Now, I've also gone to my advanced layout underscores and check show chord track. So we see that the chord track has automatically been added here. Now, if I wanted to take a number of parts and let's say I just wanted to repeat these, I'm just gonna select all these parts right here. And instead of kind of having this repeated a zillion times, I'm going to go to my rhythmic notation and as we select this, I'm gonna say, just show repeat signs for the bars. 
And now that way you could have a very clearly delineated lead sheet. So if you want to give a rhythmic indi indication, it's very simple to make your lead sheets. So as you can see, the various editing techniques of having the lower zones, being able to control which editors open in different zones, which uh, inspector is currently active, where I want to do my sample editor, whether I wanted to do my MIDI editing and choose between my key editor, drum editor, or score editor, the new editing enhancements in Cubase Pro 9 will really speed up your workflow.